is our CFO, and like I said before, a recovering economist. And uh, he's going to take us through a state of the state presentation. Lots of cool graphs and lots of great numbers, and I think it'll be interactive. So if you've got questions, just do remember to wait for a microphone uh, because we uh, have an online audience, and the only way they can hear you is if you're holding one of these. Bart. Yeah, thanks, okay. Is my mic on? Uh, uh, didn't sound Maybe. like it. The light's on. Yeah, you should be good. Just still now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, and thank you everyone for being here. Really impressed that you made it out on such a such a day. Um, we, uh, if if you were lured here on false pretenses, expecting uh, Jim with Solution Reach, I apologize. I'm a I'm a poor substitute. Thank you. Um, but after uh, lots and lots of pre uh, preparation, we we do have a, a really interesting slide deck to run through, and. Uh, I'm, I'm being facetious, I've prepared for all of 15 minutes, but uh, yesterday we had the opportunity to hear uh, an economist. Um, let, me, let me just uh, introduce her a little bit. Um, so Natalie Gochner, um, Associate Dean of the David Eccles Schools of Business and Director of the Kem C. Gardner Policy Institute at the University of Utah. She also serves as the chief economist for the Salt Lake City Chamber of Commerce. Really, really bright person. And she's had uh, experience in the uh, uh, first Bush administration uh, with three governors of the state of Utah. So it just brings to the table a, a wealth of, of experience. And so I'm just going to borrow her slide deck that we heard. Did anybody at the Central Bank event yesterday besides railroad personnel? Okay, good. So you were. Okay, so if, uh, if I don't repeat anything the, the right way that Natalie put it, please, please correct me, but I uh, hope you'll find this as interesting as I do. And you guys have hit the jackpot. Board meetings and economics on a snowy Thursday morning. <laughs> I mean, what could be better? I um, do have a bit of a segue I was thinking about. I've served on some boards, including a school board. I ran in my small town of, of, uh, in Colorado for school board twice and uh, was lucky enough to, uh, to be elected to uh, two four-year terms, so have eight years of experience on a school board, and we would sometimes get uh, letters or emails from the students, and they all began with, Dear Board of Education, so were we. <laughs> I think my daughter Bryn may have led some of those uh, email campaigns, but uh, it, it was good experience, and uh, economics were absolutely a big part of especially early on. I began in uh, my school board tenure in 2009, and uh, the, the economy was wreaking havoc on, on budgets. And uh, so it was, uh, it was an interesting time to, uh, to be serving in that capacity. But let's run through Natalie's slide deck here. Jason, I'm pressing the button. Oh, there we go. So she is talking about inflection points and what an interesting time this is, not just for the state of Utah, but uh, nationwide and globally with so many things happening in economics, in politics, uh, in uh, social media, in, in society, uh, just in, in so many different ways. And uh, she shared this picture that uh, came to her daughter who works for uh, uh, the economic development arm of... Uh, either the city of Salt Lake or the state of Utah, I can't remember which, but uh, she uses this picture as a metaphor to describe where we are in 2020, economically, politically, socially. Uh, this mountain goat, we're not sure exactly how it got up there. It obviously has, is, is very sure-footed and, and climbed some way, but it has basically three options. It can go back down or, or fall down, either one. It can climb higher or it can move laterally, right? And so Natalie uses that to say, those are, those are our choices. Um, even though I'm not a, not a resident of Utah, um, I'm here often enough that I, I, I think that I can uh, uh, qualify as a, as a wannabe Utah person from your neighboring state over. And it's, by all accounts, it's a remarkable time. And 
this is the theme that, that Natalie, as an economist, hit upon in, in so many different perspectives. So we'll just run through this. Um, like Jason said, this can be interactive. Uh, if, if you have a, a comment, a question, a correction on any of the information shared, happy to pause and talk about it. Um, in uh, coming up for a last-minute substitute for Jim this morning, some of my team members were concerned that I might say something uh, politically insensitive, so uh, I'll, I'll try not to do that, but uh, no promises. And we begin with, <laughs> <laughs> we have a president who, is, who has been impeached. And that's a fact, and he's one of three now in U.S. history who has been impeached. Im impeached. Um, he was acquitted, of course, yesterday by a margin of two votes, I believe. It would have been three, but a certain U.S. senator crossed party lines, and so it was a relatively narrow vote, but predictable. But uh, that's the political reality that we, that we live in now. And so Natalie asked the question, By margin of 18. Takes two-thirds. Oh, right. I was, I was going on simple majority. Okay, so 52, 48, but tomatoes, tomatoes. <laughs> Pete, who invited you here? <laughs> so Natalie is wondering if, if this could impact the economy, either, either state or national or, or even globally. Um, she shares this. She, like me, has uh, millennials. Uh, not necessarily living in her home any longer, but uh, who, who are out there and uh, taking over the world. And uh, they have perhaps different views than, than some of us older people do, um, or, or maybe the same views as, as the case may be. But um, when, when, when we hear politicians on, uh, to the left talking about uh, the need to to make adjustments in our, in our capitalist economy, um, please understand, they're, they're not talking about adopting a Soviet socialist system or the Venezuelan system that plainly and clearly does not work. We have components of socialism in the U.S. economy. It's called Social Security and Medicare, Medicaid, public schools, the U.S. Department of, uh, of Defense, the, the, the military. These are all combined efforts where society works together for the common good. And, you know, just like the, the race to the moon, good things can sometimes happen. Yeah, bureaucracies can, can be formed and some negative things can happen, but this is generally what we're talking about um, in, in this current political debate. So that's an interesting factor. Uh, she talked about your six candidates for governor. And yes, there are two... Uh, Democratic candidates that uh, are, are thinking about a run, but for all intents and purposes, they have very close to zero chance of winning in this state. And so these are your, your six choices. And uh, if you were at the uh, uh, Silicon Slopes Economic Sum or uh, Tech Summit last week, uh, you got a chance to hear from each of these six. And um, uh, some, some mix of, of uh, experienced politicians, uh, green to the, to the law and political field, um, but uh, very experienced uh, business people, um, in, including in, in the field of technology. So that will likely have an impact on the state of Utah. Um, Natalie focuses in on ground zero right here, uh, Utah County. And um, I'm, I'm grateful for what's going on over here. Uh, I, I, I drive in about every other week from Colorado. And uh, every time I come in, there's... There's a new crane up, there's new construction, there's a new business going up, there's, or, or 10 new businesses going in off the freeway, and it's, it's just a, a remarkable time. Um, so she shares these, these questions about uh, what's going on in, in both Utah and in um, uh, Utah County, and uh, uh, asks some, uh, some really interesting questions about whether we're at an inflection point, a turning point, um, and, and how some some external factors might affect this area, this county, this state, your business. So we'll just go through some data real quick. And she sets the stage with some really interesting charts. So this is, uh, this is nationwide, so not just, not just Utah, but uh, in the U.S., this is showing uh, job growth. So non-farm employment, 
uh, the percentage changed since the end of the last recession. And that long dotted, is that green? My wife says I'm colorblind. Yeah, so the long dotted green line that's third from, from the top is our, is our current situation. Um, this is the, the, the job recovery that, that we've seen since the downturn in 07, 08. And uh, so as, as you can see here, it, it, it's, it's good and it's long. It's, in fact, it is the longest on record. It's, it's not the best job recovery in terms of percentage growth. We've, we've had some other recoveries from recession that have been uh, significantly more robust than what this shows, measured either in, in GDP growth, which is relatively uh, tame still, um, or, or in job growth, or in a number of other ways that we'll take a look at. But um, I, I just thought that this was a, a, a fascinating chart. So we hope the good times will continue to roll on, that you, as entrepreneurs, will continue creating jobs despite what happens in Salt Lake or in Washington, D.C. Uh, so here's a comparison of uh, equity prices, the stock market, uh, as, a, as a relative measure of corporate earnings. And so one way to look at this is uh, yeah, another indication of, of boom times and just remarkable growth. Uh, another way to look at this is we're overvalued. And it's time for a correction. So if, if you're looking for someone to tell you which it is, if, if somebody says they, that they know, um, one thing you should do is uh, make sure your wallet is safely secured back there and that uh, you, know, you take what they, what they say with a, a grain of salt, or as my brother Pete likes to say, with a whole dose of salt. Um, because e economists are, are great at predicting. And they like to say, uh, if you're going to predict, predict often. Because most of the time they're going to be wrong, but on those occasions when they're right, they, they get a lot of accolades for that. Like, how did you know? <laughs> you know, so just like weathermen, they can predict it, there, there's going to be a massive snowstorm all the time. Sometimes they'll be right, but uh, quite often they will not be. So um, uh, e economists, I think, are on record of uh, predicting the last uh, uh, 17 of the last six recessions. So they, <laughs> they over-forecasted there just a little bit. This is kind of a messy chart but uh, shows some really interesting trends here. Uh, again, comparing to, uh, uh, well, let's see, sorry, this is, this is not going off of, the, off of the last recession. This is just uh, showing over time four different issues that uh, business owners are concerned about. Uh, increasing sales or revenue, uh, the, the burden of government regulation, taxes, and labor cost. And so you can see in the, in the red there, we've seen a nice slide. And this is a good, usually we, we're, all, we're all looking for up and to the right kinds of charts, revenue growth. But this is good. People are less concerned about growing revenue, meaning the revenues must be, must be doing okay. And so what's the big concern now? Labor costs. Yeah, why? Yeah, we're at full employment for all intents and purposes. Anybody who wants a job can generally find a job. Wages are increasing to, uh, to compete for, for, for good labor. We all are looking for good people. The number one key ingredient in, in driving any business, right? And so this is, this is the major concern right now. Um, let's see. Uh, I, I can't remember if Natalie mentioned this yesterday. If, I, I had a chance to meet with her, and I, I think I was d discussing this with her yesterday, just kind of one-on-one -on -one with Central Bank. But uh, Utah is is an interesting place for for so many reasons. Um, I, I mean, it's beautiful, and it's 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 in a boom time. Um, but it's it's also unique in that uh, uh, compared to other places, especially compared to other red states. Utah is very open to others coming in, others in the form of immigrants from other states like me, but more importantly from other countries. And, and some, some other states have, uh, have kind of a, uh, you know, a, a stiff arm, like, uh, nope, don't come here. So uh, that's, that's something that's, that's helping Utah in this labor shortage of uh, 
getting more people to, to come in because the economy really, really grows uh, relative to, to the population. And Natalie has some slides here on uh, uh, demographics for the, for the state of Utah in terms of, uh, of age where it has some additional advantages. But uh, openness to immigration is another advantage that Utah has. Um, so over the last, uh, what is this, 23 years, uh, we are in uncharted territory in terms of uh, geopolitical uncertainty. And this isn't just talking about the impeachment and the, 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 the daily Twitter show that, that goes on from the White House. It's, it's also talking about Brexit and the Middle East and, and China and everywhere. And so people are more concerned about this relative to, uh, to the last 20 or 23 years. Um, Okay, so here's another interesting chart on uh, uh, GDP growth since, uh, our, 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 sorry, uh, government debt as a, as a percentage of uh, uh, GDP. And so in, in that top dotted line, that's our, our current situation. Since the recovery, we are in uncharted territory, just like we are with, uh, with, with job growth. So our debt is growing and it's, it shows no sign of stopping. The, the national deficit every year, the budget deficit, adds to that debt and it's, anybody know the number? Is it like 21, 22 trillion? Something like that. And uh, I remember people not too many years ago being up in arms that reached double digit trillions, 10 trillion. So uh, Natalie says from uh, from an economist perspective, this isn't a, a, a door, uh, sorry, a wolf at your door, a clear and, and present danger, ready to break down and just cause everything to, to be ruined. Partially because interest rates are, are so low and so the, the, the portion of the deficit that goes to uh, debt repayment is relatively tame and reasonable by some measures, even though that debt is so high. So she says it's not like a wolf, it's more like termites in the foundation, in the wood, in the structure of the home. Eventually, it, it, will, it will come home to, uh, to cause some damage. But uh, for right now, there's, there's no risk of that, that home, that frame, if you will, collapsing due to that debt. Um, this is interesting. This is, this, these are Google searches on keywords, recession, and next recession. So you can see during a recession, during the, the recession of 07, 08, 09 time period, lots of people were searching on recession currently going on. We're currently not in recession, so the, the Google search for next recession is, is increasing dramatically. And uh, let's see, she has some slides on that. I think they're coming up. Oh, no, this, this is the one. So. This is a poll of, uh, by the Wall Street Journal on um, uh, e economists and what their forecasts are and whether they think there will be a recession anytime soon. Um, so uh, a relatively small percent think, in, uh, think that 2020 is the next recession. And then about 60% of these economists think it'll be in the next couple of years. So combined, about 75% of economists think there'll be a, there will be a recession in the next two years. But remember, economists have predicted 17 of the last six recessions. So not sure you can put a lot of stock in this, but uh, it is a concern. And, and sometimes these, these, uh, these forecasts, these economic uh, uh, projections can become self-fulfilling prophecies, right? If, if enough people believe that we're, we're slowing down, then we stop investing, we stop spending, we stop hiring, we stop building, and Pretty soon, lo and behold, we're in a slowdown. We're in a downturn. So some statistics that Natalie shares on the state of the state of the great state of Utah. Uh, so many different measures that, that have Utah uh, a, a long ways out, out front compared to other states. So this is 10-year growth, non-farm employment. So uh, jobs, generally speaking, that... Uh, are not related to acutus ag and what you guys are trying to do. But uh, yeah, right. discrimination against the farmers. <laughs> um, 
But, uh, so, so Utah, and in this case, red is, is good. It's, it's the highest. Over 30% job growth in that, in that 10-year time period, and uh, far and away leading, leading other even relatively uh, hot, shown in, in pink states that are also doing well. But uh, Utah's number one, so congratulations. Uh, so this shows just what Utah's uh, number is, uh, uh, job growth uh, compared to neighboring states, other western states. Um, it, it's, it, it's way higher um, than the U.S. average. But it's important to note that, uh, um, so as well as Utah is doing, and, and you know, this is, uh, if, if we showed a slide of uh, GDP growth, it would look similar to this, where Utah is, is leading compared to other states and well above the national average. Um, but, but this is growth. This is not relative size. If, if we showed this in, in relative size, California is 20 times at least, I'm, I'm guessing, I don't know what the actual numbers are, 20 times the size of the economy of Utah. Uh, Colorado, I know because I know the, the statistics on, on its population is twice the size of Utah. But Utah is catching up. And some people think that's a, a very good thing. Growth is good. Jobs are good. But it creates congestion and crowds and uh, overpriced homes or what some consider to be overpriced homes or a shortage of homes and maybe pollution and lot, lots, of, lots of things. And so growth comes with these kinds of challenges. And uh, we, we elect leaders to, uh, political leaders, to try to solve these problems for us. Okay, so since the recession, uh, Utah is uh, clearly way above the, the rest of the nation in, in terms of job growth. And then the question becomes, what's the quality of the jobs? What's the pay? What's the... Uh, you know, kind of the economic result. And uh, I've, I've seen other statistics on this that shows that uh, Utah is doing a good job in terms of uh, uh, income equality and uh, more opportunities for, for more different types of people and uh, just in terms of wage growth. But there again, that positive thing can, can be a double-edged sword. Um, that, that wage growth can lead to um, price hikes in different commodities, different different services, different things, and it can lead to, you know, such as housing, and it can lead to, uh, to some other things that are not so pleasant. So, you know, we, we, we can take pride in the state being number one economically for, in, in terms of growth for, for the nation, but just understand that that comes with, with challenges at the same time. So the unemployment rate, uh, and, and here red is not the... Not what you're looking for. It looks like Alaska and Mississippi are still having some, some real challenges relative to, uh, to unemployment. Um, so these uh, clear states, these white states, uh, Utah, North Dakota, South Carolina, um, compared to gray and then dark gray, um, excellent. Um, it's, it's good to have low unemployment compared to the reverse and the recession that we see of high unemployment. But this, this phenomenon, this factor, leads to uh, shortage of, uh, of, of workers and, uh, and uh, increase in, in businesses' costs to hire those workers and to attract them. Okay, so now we go to ground zero right here, Utah County itself. And uh, so the U.S., over, uh, since the last recession, has, uh, has been uh, doing a good job of uh, creating... Uh, a lot of new jobs, almost 10% since then. Um, Utah County has just been a machine, almost twice the rate as Utah, so it's really driving it. And uh, Wasatch County, um, what is that, Heber? Yeah, so much much more rural area, and so uh, the, the growth rate is higher than in, in Utah County, but uh, we, we start here from a, a much larger base, and uh, so probably a bigger bigger economic driver. AJ. And the point she made was that Wasatch is really the growth that is happening because of Utah County, so it's like a better community to Utah County. Yes. So what AJ said is, is the, the Wasatch County is almost a, a bleed-over effect from what's happening in Utah County as, as we get a little bit more crowded and as prices increase and 
um, they're, what, the next county over, I guess. And so that's where some of that growth is going. But uh, Utah County is, is definitely the economic engine for Utah. Utah, in turn, is one of the bright stars that, uh, in terms of economic growth for the, for the whole nation. Um, this is really interesting. This might be a little bit of an eye strain for some of you, but it's, it's basically showing, um, let's see, so it starts uh, kind of in the middle, lower right there. Um, where is the, uh, the, the, the mean population center for the whole state? And we, we know that it's, you know, it's always going to be located along the Wasatch Front, but where exactly? And it's, it, it moved north in the 50s and 60s. You can see that teal moving up to another teal kind of a color in 1960 and then even further up in 1970. But from 1970, it's had a definite and dramatic march south into the Draper area and now into um, Lehigh, I believe. Oh, Saratoga Springs. Is that south of Lehigh? Okay. Okay. And, that, and that's 20, 2010, right? So 2020, this year, another census will be taken, and she's guessing that it'll, it'll move further south and further west. Right? So here's a, an interesting pictogram on Utah's population. It's, uh, it's the youngest state in the nation because you guys have so many babies. Um, but that's, that's a great thing, economically speaking, just as it is for ha being, being relatively more open to uh, immigration because population and GDP growth are uh, very strongly correlated. Um, but her, her point in, in moving forward about 50 years into the future is that uh, Utah County will be very much more crowded um, to the point of... Uh, having a similar population as Salt Lake City. And I thought, when she first said this, I thought that she meant Utah County will have the same population in 2065 as Salt Lake County has in 2020. No, Utah County in 2065 will be equal in terms of number of people as Salt Lake County is, is the, the projection. Did I miss anything on that? I'm um, not sure what happened to this slide. She, so, she shows uh, a map of Utah and uh, Utah County as being the, the, the leader and some other counties doing well. But there are several counties that are in recession, if not depression. And these are what, Carbon County and Uinta County and Duchesne? Yeah, so uh, some that uh, are, are still somewhat reliant on, on coal mining. And, and energy for their economy that have not had the benefit of an entrepreneurial ecosystem that has just revolutionized um, this area. So uh, it's, it's a rosy picture for the state as a whole, but there are pockets that are lagging really far behind. So uh, she gets into the 2020 elections and uh, what, that will, what impact that might have on on the economy uh, statewide and nationwide. And so the, these are some trends that, uh, I'm not sure I understand this entirely, but uh, it's called consumer comfort by political party aff affiliation. So it's, it's kind of measuring if, um, you know, there's this uh, University of Michigan poll on uh, consumer sentiment. Um, maybe it has something to do with that, but uh, uh, generally speaking, during the downturn, um, everybody was feeling a little bit less optimistic. And then, uh, let's see, the blue Democrats, probably during the Obama administration, felt just slightly more optimistic uh, about the, uh, you know, the economy or, or consumption or whatever the, the metric was. Uh, but then there's been a clear break where Republicans feel uh, significantly more optimistic than, uh, than independents or, or Democrats. And she says that that has some, some uh, definite implications for the election to come. Um, so just comparing the, the last two presidencies, the, uh, the first three years of uh, Trump's administration and the last three years of the Obama administration. And before we get into this comparison, I, I, I would just suggest to you that uh, uh, both of these individuals, uh, Trump and Obama, have as much to do with the growth of the economy as I do. Um, 
you know, huh? That much. <laughs> Pete might argue even less. But, uh, you know, I, 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 I'd like to think that I've, I've, I've helped create some jobs and uh, helped spur just a, you know, micro fraction of economic activity. But presidents get blamed just as they, they like to take credit. Blamed in bad times, they like to take credit in good times. So take these statistics with, with that grain of salt. Um, so real, real GDP, an, average annual growth uh, in Trump's first three years versus Obama's last year, dead heat for all intents and purposes. No difference. So is it the greatest economy we've ever seen? Uh, not, not necessarily. Um, it's, it's doing okay. Um, inflation is ratcheting up a little bit. Uh, that third one, uh, 220,000 jobs created per month versus 191,000 per month over the last three years. So pretty big difference there. Um, let's see. Let's, let's go to a, that, that middle one, Wilshire 5,000. So the stock market, very, very much of a difference um, in, in terms of uh, 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 timing. You, you're, you're going to get a, a higher return on your investment um, for the last three years than you would have for um, President Obama's first three years. But uh, again, who's, who, who gets credit for that? Is it the entrepreneurs out there taking risks and you know, creating, driving innovation, creating new products and services, or is it a bureaucrat in the White House? I'll leave that for you to decide. Uh, let's see, so uh, uh, mortgage rates um, are a little bit higher now than they were in the recent past. Um, our, our trade deficit gets a lot of, uh, a lot of attention. And then a, another factor here that, that has a, there's a big difference is uh, there, there's a lot more debt uh, being created in, in the last three years than there was in the, in the first three years of the Obama administration. And if you were to ask somebody just off the street, random question, who, which presidency, which administration created more debt, kind of the school of thought would be, oh, well, it must have been, must have been Obama, must have been the Democrats. And in, in fact, that's not true. So here's, here's her, N Natalie's projection on uh, how the election turns out later this year, um, if, it's, if it's typical, meaning if there's typical turnout. Um, it's Trump's to lose, she projects, because we're in a good economy. And like Bill Clinton famously said in the 90s, it's the economy, stupid. That's factor number one. And then it's national defense and education and poverty and some of these other factors, but it's, it's the economy first and foremost. So if there's just an average typical turnout, uh, Trump probably wins in a landslide. And she says the only chance Democrats have is, uh, and, and, and it's not even a guarantee, is if there's an extraordinarily high turnout. And the high turnout would, would favor the Democrats, whoever the, the nominee is yet. Yet to be decided, of course. So here's, here's kind of her forecast on uh, what, what are risks to the Utah economy. So if the, if the global economy and certainly if the national economy goes into recession, there's a chance the Utah economy could likewise go into a recession. And a recession is defined by economists as two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. Probably what would happen is if, if the... Uh, U.S. goes into recession. Um, Utah just, in, in, instead of being on fire, it's, it's got a slow burn. So it slows down a little bit, but it's, it's not regressing. It's not in recession, is, is her forecast. Uh, a, a labor shortage, uh, she would probably factor in as a, as a bigger risk, more likelihood of chance of, of, of that happening and, and affecting the Utah economy. Um, trade war, the global slowdown we kind of covered with the U.S. Um, a manufacturing recession um, would, would certainly do damage to the, uh, to the nation. Um, not, not sure if it would have as, as much of an impact to, to the Utah economy. And, and then a stock market correction could take a lot of liquidity, a lot of wealth, a lot of confidence um, from, from consumers, which drive, really drive the economy. So those are all risks, and then some geopolitical risks she, she lists here. And uh, the one most interesting to me is, uh, is Fed policy error. So the Fed is, the Federal Reserve is responsible for setting interest rates, short-term interest rates, and 
to some degree they have uh, uh, been successful in um, making good decisions. Uh, she said that she would have expected in 2019 to have seen three rate increases, but we saw uh, pretty much the opposite. She thinks going forward that we will see um, flat interest rates, that the Fed will take no action. Um, guys that were, were there, any, anything else on interest rates that she said? I feel like I might be missing something. Okay. So, uh, factors that cause an expansion to end or a recession to set in. Um, and and uh, on, on the left here, you see uh, things that have actually happened. Um, we, we know about the subprime mortgages, and if you, if you want a quick refresher on what happened, if you were too young or didn't, didn't fully know what was going on, uh, read the book, The Big Short. They've also made an excellent movie out of it. That explains it very well. Uh, the tech bubble of uh, 2000, 2001 um, caused a lot of pain to me. Um, may have been able to, uh, in, in some universe, retire. But uh, thankfully, that tech bubble was burst, and I, I uh, did not retire at a young age because that wouldn't have done me any good at all. So sometimes there's a silver lining in these things. Um, She's talking about excessive speculation, overvalued assets, overbuilt restate, uh, real estate. Um, all of these things have caused uh, expansions to end since World War II. And then um, that, that's kind of on the economic end and then exposures on, on the, uh, the public policy or the political side. She mentions these, which uh, we've, we've kind of touched upon all of those already. Any, any comments or questions on any of these on this particular slide? Okay, so just about done here. Uh, this is her forecast for Utah. Um, you can see there's, there's not much of a change between yellow, red, and gray um, in, in any of these factors. Uh, there's, uh, there's a slight slowdown. She's projecting in job growth and personal income. Uh, the employment rate will, for all intents and purposes, hold steady. And uh, uh, some increase in annual pay as reflected in that that labor shortage, but not huge changes. So she's, she's kind of taking the safe route here. And then she ends with the question, what does it all mean for your businesses, for the state of Utah, for the county of Utah, Utah County here, and then for the, for the nation and the world? Um, and, uh, you know, she doesn't, she is astute enough, and, and, and she is just, I, I, I wish that we could get her here sometime. Right? Those of you who saw her, she is just so polished and, and, and such a good presenter. Um, and, and she covers dicey topics like this, politics and the economy and your businesses, your job creation, with, with such professionalism, yet also uh, kind of a, a, a delicate touch where she's not stepping on anyone's toes. I hope I haven't stepped on your toes. Um, would, would love to hear from you on what this means for your business. Anybody have any comments on, on Natalie's economic data that she's presented and how, how, what that makes you feel about how your businesses might move forward? Tigran? Lord, I have a question. Um, help me understand a little bit. Why was the Brexit no deal affecting us? Or was it? Or did I not... Um, so with, with the UK bowing out of the European Union, the, th the thought there is that that could have some uh, ramifications on the world economy in terms of uh, uh, free and open markets, trade um, could slow down just a little bit. Uh, the, the UK used to be the largest economy in the world, and it hasn't been for over a century. So it's probably not a, a huge threat, but I, I, I think that her... Her rationale for listing this here as a geopolitical threat is, is probably just in, in that overall category of uh, uh, free trade. And we've already seen some restraint on growth because of the trade war with China, which uh, we may or may not have a deal to, to end that. But if, if, if the whole Brexit phenomenon continues, it, it, it's possible that that just negative, negative, negatively, sorry, affects trade. So Bart, with that, could that uh, uncertainty play in there? Because 
Markets hate uncertainty, right? And yeah. Are they in? Just like Joel's slides, <laughs> Chuck Norris. Yeah, so that's that's definitely another factor, and uh, you know we we've seen with the uh, coronavirus, uh, it's it's taken stock markets down significantly. Um, they were up yesterday, but uh, you know a lot of volatility there, and uh, yeah, markets don't like uncertainty, so definitely could be a factor. Was there a question here? Okay. Okay. Let's go back here, Peyton. If you want to pass that back. I'll just bring a little uh, fun to this. I, I appreciate her slides because it showed Mississippi being at the at the bottom of that and, and Utah being welcoming. Well, I just left Mississippi 12 months ago and I've been very welcomed and I've enjoyed it. <laughs> but uh, I like I like the good about both places. So if you want to relax and enjoy, go back to Mississippi. If you want to be wired and have fun and grow businesses, come here. Yeah. So, thank you and appreciate y'all's welcoming uh, hospitality. Welcome. Absolutely. <laughs> So, so one thing on that, something that, uh, that Utah and Mississippi share is uh, they're, they're both among the bottom or among the leaders, depending on how you look at it, in terms of uh, uh, education dollars spent per capita. And uh, I, I think that the data would show there's a different result, though, that uh, uh, Utah gets a little bit more, quite a bit more bang for the buck in terms of uh, education performance of its students which itself is, is a major economic driver. I mean, I, I think there, there can be no question that what started all of this here, just like what started everything in, in Silicon Valley, was Stanford and UC Berkeley and you know, a dozen other schools right there in that area that are training engineers and programmers and all the, all the STEM courses. And, and then it flows down to we humble uh, uh, business economists, accounting nerds. So. Um, that's, that's what's driven or what, what has begun a lot of this economic ecosystem here in Utah is the U, BYU, UVU, and Weber State. And what, what's that one that you went to? Aggies all the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's, that's all a very key component. And it, it, it's not just the university system. It starts with focus on education at the earliest of ages. Other questions, comments, complaints? Right here. Um, I noticed in the slides that she had listed with the different recessions that the United States has experienced, certain reasons, right? The subprime mortgages, the technology boom. Did any of the economists that kind of forecasted that 60% in the next couple of years, what the reason would be? And then how was it different, like recovering from those recessions? What brought us out of that? Yeah, really good question. I, I, th I think the answer is... You, you never really know what's going to cause a recession in uh, in, in 2007, in, in, even in early 2008. People thought the the the, the sub -pro, subprime uh, and, and and the debt credit crunch was was just that kind of an isolated thing before it blossomed into a full blown crisis that uh, came this close to bringing the U.S. economy and government down. And uh, it, it was through some deft maneuvering that, and so people don't agree with the maneuvering that happened because it ballooned our deficit from like, I don't know, 11 trillion to 14 trillion. And now we, here we are, nearly double that. So, um, but there, there's this phenomenon that, that economists talk about called a black swan event. And by definition, the black swan is something that nobody has on their radar, doesn't even know about right now. Who knows? Maybe it's the, it's the coronavirus. Maybe it's something totally unrelated. Um, I, I, I think that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's really the key question. And if, if you have the answer to it, let me know because I, I, I want to profit off of that. An interesting comment too is I've talked to someone that even the down markets, that's especially when, I guess, in this community, entrepreneurs can really succeed. I guess they find what people are needing. Yeah. And then can deliver. And that's a lot of the innovation driven, um, those sort of things. So. Yeah, excellent. Who can name some companies that were started during a recession? Google. Google? Come on, there's lots. Amazon, Nike, Microsoft. You ever heard of these companies? So a recession isn't the end of the world. Um, it, it can be for some. And some people say the definition of. Uh, uh, of a recession is when your neighbor is out of work. Definition of a depression is when you're out of work. So it's all perspective, right? Okay. Well, thank you very much for coming. Appreciate it.